The browser is one of the most important features of the Ableton Live interface. We're going to be using the browser throughout this course for a number of different things. We're going to take a quick look now at Ableton Live's browser and just some of the things that you'll be doing with it throughout the lessons in this course. The Ableton Live browser is located on the upper left side of the Ableton Live interface and it's visible in both the arrangement and the session view. You can increase the size of the browser by clicking and dragging here. And as you can see, there are more fields visible up here as I click and drag to the right. And you can close that up right here. That's about a, a good size for the browser. You can also show and hide the browser using the browser show hide button. Now the browser is actually four different browsers in one. And we're going to take a look at each one of these individually. First up, we have the live devices browser. Now this includes all of your live instrumentation all of your live MIDI effects, and all of Live's included audio effects. If you want to navigate anywhere in the browser, it's as simple as opening the folder, and then now we can see our included live instruments, and we're going to click. We could either add the instrument in its default state to our live set by clicking and dragging, or we can load a preset by looking here at some of the preset folders and opening folders and checking out what we've got here. Preset instruments can be loaded into a live set just by clicking and dragging. In this case, it's a MIDI instrument, as are all of Live's instruments, so it has to go onto either a MIDI track or, or onto an empty spot on the clip device drop area to create a new track. MIDI effects are accessed the same way. You can drag the effect in its default state right onto a MIDI track, or you can open it up and choose a preset and drag the preset onto a track. MIDI effects can only be used on MIDI tracks, whereas audio effects can be used on both audio and MIDI tracks, and once again, it's the same functionality. We navigate till we find a preset we want, and we drag it directly onto our audio or MIDI track. Or we can select an effect in its default state and drag that onto our track. We'll be looking in detail at both MIDI and audio effects in movies in this course, and of course we will be looking at live instruments throughout the lessons in this course. Next up, we have the plug-in devices, and this is any third-party VST or audio unit instruments you have installed on your computer. VSTs for both Windows and OS X, audio units specifically for those of you working on OS X computers. I open up my audio units folder, and I can see that I have a number of subfolders, each representing a different uh, manufacturer of audio units, and this includes both my instruments and effects. I can select an instrument at any time, drag it onto a MIDI track, or I can select an audio unit effect and drag it onto either an audio or MIDI track. If I want to quickly close all of these folders, I can just double click on the browser select button. And this is true for all of Live's browsers. Next up, we have the three file browsers. Now, this takes us to any three locations on our hard drive. Now, we can access these locations in a number of ways. First of all, we can go to our bookmarks list here, and Live comes preset with one, two, three, four, five different bookmarked locations. These are frequently used locations for Live users. I can go right to my desktop, select a folder, and navigate. I can also navigate by clicking the parent folder and going up a level. And I can keep going up until I get to, the, to my various hard drives. Let's take a look at Live's library bookmark setting. And this is where you'll find a lot of Live's included default content. In fact, it's where you'll find all of Live's included content. And I'm going to use this location to show you the search functionality. So I've just clicked the search button. I'm going to type in the word piano and click go. And Live is going to search the current directory, the library, for all of the folders, all of the files, rather, containing the word piano. And this includes clips. It includes uh, presets for my instruments. And it includes some presets for my effects as well. And I can preview my clips or by clicking the wave file to preview that. And I could drag any of my instruments or effects onto 
directly onto tracks. Going back here, let's go to my desktop folder and this How Audio folder. And if I want to add this to my bookmarked locations, I can just select Bookmark Current Folder, and then I can navigate around my hard drive and quickly come back to it at any time by selecting it on the bookmark list. As you saw a second ago, I can preview clips, and I can preview any audio files, uh, including AIFF, WAVE, and now in Ableton Live 7, REX files, just by selecting them, and they will automatically be previewed. Now this is uh, only if the preview button is activated, but it's activated by default when you install live. So if you want to turn that functionality off, you can do that up here. But generally you want to leave that on by default. And you can adjust the volume of the preview over here with the preview cue volume knob. So I can turn this down or up. Another very cool new feature uh, in the browser in Ableton Live 7 is that when you select a, a loop file and preview it, it previews it at its default tempo, its original tempo. In previous versions of Live, audio files would be previewed at the current sets tempo. So this is a great way to hear what a loop is supposed to sound like at its default tempo. You can select any loop, and this is also true, you'll see later, for MIDI files as well, in the browser and drag it directly onto an audio track to add it to your live set. You can double click it in the browser and add it to a live set. We'll look at all of this functionality throughout this course. The final browser here is called the Hot Swap Browser, and this is used to switch out samples quickly when you're working with Ableton Live's drum and sampler instruments. This is something we won't really be working with in this course because as you'll see, the drum and sampler instruments have their own individual hot swap buttons and we'll be using that functionality to switch out samples. So that's a look at the very important Ableton Live browser and some of the functionality you'll be accessing throughout this course.